Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We are looking out our windows right now at a beautiful South Swell. It's been one of the best summers uh, for surf uh, that I can remember. And uh, we've been out there riding. And uh, But today we're going to have a guest with us who's going to do it. Who we're going to talk about a different kind of riding. We have Casey Monins. She is a cowgirl extraordinaire. And uh, my wife just came by because my wife's a cowgirl. She just waved at Casey on our the video screen that we have. And uh, we're just really stoked to have a real cowgirl with us. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, my wife and I were driving along um, here in Waikiki towards Diamond Head. As we came around the point at Diamond Head about nine months ago, she said, you got to listen to this song. And the song's theme is, where have all the cowboys gone? And uh, so my next book that I'm, I'm working on right now uh, for Sophia Publishing is called, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And we have uh, all we use that as a theme to draw out all these different rules of manliness that we have. It's also our Bear School of Manliness website. It's all cowboy and cowgirl kind of, kind of uh, uh, theme because we really the cowboys and the cowgirls were really a special uh, breed. They teach us about honor. They teach us about courage. They teach they teach us about fortitude. They teach about keeping their word. Um, uh, they teach us about humility. They teach us about pulling their hat down when things get tough. And, and so we just really love uh, cowboys. Are, cowboys are a unique American uh, experience, although in Hawaii we've had the Paniolos and uh, the Mexican cowboys came over, the Vaqueros, and worked here. But that Western cowboy is, is just a unique, um, I think, example to us of, what, of the strength of, of being an American. And, and part of that cowboy uh, lore was uh, having a strong uh, relationship with God. I mean, if there's one thing about a cowboy, yeah, if there's one thing about a cowboy, it's that there's a lot of time for solitude. When you're, when all you hear out there is maybe the creaking of the sal saddle a little bit, and you, uh, you hear your horses snort or the maybe clumping of his of his hooves, and maybe if it's windy, you hear a breeze or maybe a meadowlark. But uh, there's a lot of time for solitude, and that's one thing our world is missing today. We need to take aside times for prayer, times to be alone with the Lord, times to uh, meditate on His Word, and to just and just to commune with Him. So we're so stoked. We got a real cowgirl here with us, uh, Casey Monins, who's a friend of our good friend Father Bryce Lundgren. Aloha, Casey. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> good morning. Do, How's it going? Do you say howdy out there anymore? Yeah, some people do. Uh, maybe a little tongue in cheek, but yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's just so cool. So, Casey, will you uh, help help me out by in just introducing us a little bit to your cowgirl uh, heritage? You know how yeah. you uh, you grew up as a cowgirl, and then how you're you're, you're you've, you've you've rodeoed, and but you actually are work you've worked on ranches, you've trained horses. Can you give us? We want to hear all about it. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Casey Monins for 19 more days, and then July 30th, I will be married. But um, I was raised on a commercial cattle ranch in northeastern Wyoming by Devil's Tower. Um, mm, beautiful Father country. Bryce, yeah, beautiful Father country. Bryce is my priest. He he does the whole mission circuit there to all those little rural parishes. But it's a beautiful country. Um, you know, you can't beat the seclusion. We're uh, an hour and a half drive to the next uh, nearest grocery store. There's no cell service. So we love that. But um, yeah, like I said, I'll be married to the love of my life, Tobias, in 19 days. And he is near Red Lodge, Montana, and he works for a year as well. Yeah. So it's uh, it's been a different experience to kind of um, be steeped in this mountain cowboying um, way of life as well. So mm -hmm. Tobias is very much a mountain man, avid hunter. Um, elk hunting guide. He's cowboy really? right up next to Yellowstone. We're coming. Park. We're coming. <laughs> He's cowboy yet next to Yellowstone Park too. Yes, yes. Uh, he loves the wild country. I mean, amongst the wolves and the grizzly bears and things that you know nobody else would do. So he is very much a man's man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I actually had a cabin in Mo Montana, up two miles from Canada, 
on the west side of the north uh, the north fork of the Flathead River. So I yeah. looked right into Glacier Park. I looked at the Kintlaw Ridge right on the Canadian border that stands up like a knife hand going straight up into the sky. And you're right, uh, grizzlies really are nothing to be trifled with, you know? Nope. nope. Yeah. It's all new to me, but <laughs> I feel pretty safe with Tobias. <laughs> but I used to see the elk herd up in the fall, you know, up on the mountains and, uh, and hear, their, hear their bugle. And, uh, but I didn't know when I built my little cabin, uh, my sons and I built it on this ridge, uh, until uh, a, a guy walked by one day, and I, I kind of walked across the ridge line, like you don't expect to see people there. And he, he said, hello, the, hello, the house. And I came out and he said, you know, you built your cabin right on a grizzly corridor. <laughs> they like these little berries. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember uh, uh, waking up one day and uh, walking outside. I had put a roll of carpet, a rug outside on the porch. I was going to lay it the next day. And a cougar had uh, sprayed it. Oh, you know, yeah. That that was the end of that. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> I slept with a shotgun underneath my bedroll, I guarantee you, when I was in my little flimsy cabin. But so you, you've, you've actually lived this wonderful life. Wyoming is so spectacular. And so many people don't know mm-hmm. how spectacular I hope they don't. it is. Yeah. <laughs> we like being left alone. <laughs> I'm just yes, kidding. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, I remember driving through there like in the pre-dawn hours and as the sun just began to show, like thousands of antelope. Mm-hmm. Just just yeah. couldn't number them. Just running yeah. running free yes very much so we love it yeah um you know ranches get smaller and smaller as time goes on we'll never be back to um the way the cowboy life used to be but um we grow we change we have our different disciplines now and it's still a beautiful way of life you're right i mean cowboys have so many of the virtues that translate over to the catholic faith so now when you say cowboys that includes cowgirls too right yeah of course because yeah. here, here in hawaii we have beach boys <laughs> and they're the ones, they were the, they were the uh, retainers of royalty here, and they taught the, the celebrities when they'd come out to visit. But there's beach girls, but they're just all called beach boys. Right. But so now I thought you were, I, th- I had this impression you were just a real good person, but I see you're wearing a black hat. What does that mean? Does that mean anything bad? <laughs> I wondered if you were going to bring that up. Yeah, that was very much Hollywood. You know, bad guys wore the black hats and the good guys wore the white hats. But no, you're, it, it's a, nowadays it's more of a formal occasion, you know, put your do you wear, hat on. Do you wear your jeans tucked in or, or out to your boots? Um, mine are out. <laughs> yeah, is that but more? In, you know, different parts of the country, that's, you know, everybody has their different styles. You know, you mentioned the vaquero tradition or the yeah. Americanized buckaroo tradition. We have the punchers in Oklahoma and Texas. Um, you know, we're a little different up here in Montana, the way people dress and the saddles they use and the gear. So yeah. Everyone in the, in well, the country. Those mesquite, those, those mesquite trees down down in the southwest are gnarly. I can see yep. why they wore, wore them out and wore chaps. Okay, so yep. you're, you're a little, tell me when is the first time you wore anything other other than cowboy boots for shoes. Do you remember? <laughs> no, I was the, I was the horse girl in elementary school for sure. Um, yeah, I definitely wore my jeans and boots to school, but I guess probably middle school. I don't know. Because <laughs> I've seen pictures of <laughs> these, little, ever... these little fluffy boots that are fake cowboy boots that the babies wear. You know, it's yep, like, yep. yeah, so from the very it's beginning. So what is your, what is your remember, memory when you uh, first had chores to do on the ranch? Hmm. What was your job? I don't know if I, I'm. I'm really bad at remembering um, my childhood. I, I not as good to block as it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely we had bottle calves. Um, you know, I was put on a horse at the age of two. So, um, whether it was actually my responsibility or whether I was just helping dad do chores, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. But you were there. At a I very mean, young you, age. Yeah, yeah, that's just so cool. And and you know, we're, we're, the reason why we have Casey on is because she's got a new. Um, Oh, she's just awesome. She writes a lot of great articles uh, um, about her Catholicism, especially as she, she's on the road, how to, uh, how to keep, that, uh, how to keep your in the rhythm of your Catholic life there. But you have a new, a new uh, fire, I would say. Uh, uh, what, what is your website called again? The, the, the new the, the fire uh, theme that you have. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I A few months ago, launched a blog, and it was just very much the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing what happens when you listen to that prompting because it's been so well received. Um, It's uh, named after, there's a quote uh, by Gustav Mahler, and it goes, uh, tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire. Oh, my God, that's so important right now. So So important right now. 
Yes, yes, so cool. Wow. So it marries the the Catholic tradition that I'm I'm I mean, it's just so beautiful and then the other tradition that I'm in, you know, the cowboy tradition. And so it kind of marries those two because I feel like I'm in a very unique position to tell the world about that and um yeah, like I said, the Holy Spirit was prompting me to kind of get out there and, and write about that. So, Well, we got to take a break here in a moment, but where can people find you? Thepreservationoffire.com, and you can subscribe to my blog there. <laughs> I can just tell you, um, you know, I've got the, this new book with Sophia, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, The 24 Rules of Manliness. And then Father Bryce Lundgren, I told him, you got to get, right, get Father Bryce to write a book for you. So he's got a book go- coming. I forget the name, but it's The Cowboy Code, or I forget what it is. He's stealing all my best material. He's plagiarizing me. And then I think we should get Sophia to have you do something with them, too. I think it just should be so oh. – we, 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 the three of us would go out there, the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, That's we, right. Oh. <laughs> we'll, keep you, we'll keep you as the good. Well, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. This is Daniel the Boom Markham with another episode of Country Up, God's Humor. God just might have a sense of humor. I believe the scriptures show us as much. Some of you are thinking, that's the darndest thing to say. Even sacrilegious. Be careful there, boy. Well, just look at his creation. Take a gander at the spiny lump sucker or the fried-eyed jellyfish or the naked mole rat or the red-lipped batfish. Plenty of gold darn looking critters. Makes you smile just calling them by their names, you old spiny lump sucker, you. There's a time Mary, with chutzpah, only a Jewish mama could muster, verbally waved her hand with confidence at the wedding servants. Do whatever he tells you. Moving Jesus to conduct his first miracle, unplanned as it was. Never underestimate the power of a mama. Take the time after the resurrection when Jesus appeared to his boys on the Sea of Galilee. Advise a more careful run at John 21. Instead of dramatic like on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus casually cooking breakfast on the beach, saunters out of the shoreline fog, nonchalantly calling out to his boys, Lads, have you caught anything? Having been skunked after fishing all night, Jesus directs, Boys, put the net on the other side of the boat. The light goes on as John recognizes this is a repeat when his fishing buds and he were first called by Jesus. He shouts out, It's the Lord! Completely in character, Peter leaps out of the boat and swims to Jesus, leaving his fishing partners to slowly drag the massive catch ashore. Jesus set the boys up. Do you think maybe, just maybe Jesus was smiling, if not laughing at Peter hightailing it from ship to shore? He's got to have a sense of humor. After all, he created you. Funnier yet, he created me. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. We are talking with Casey Monins, who, by the time this show airs, is going to be, what's your f- new last name? Uh, Courtner. I'll be Casey Courtner. It's got a Casey, nice ring to it. It does. <laughs> and your husband's Tobias? Tobias. Isn't that oh a great name? Oh, my God. I mean, she, she, he's already taken the best possible name, so if you have, you're going to have to have all little girls because that, that name is just so awesome. <laughs> and so, but 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 Casey is a, is a real cowgirl. What, what have your... Uh, what were your? Uh, you still do compete sometimes. When you were out rodeoing, tell tell us about that first. Yeah, for sure. So I rodeoed ever since I was a kid. I mean, five years old. I think I started to compete. Um, you know, 
uh, college rodeo is very much a college sport, you know, in the Western states. And so I had a full ride scholarship to uh, rodeo all four years. Literally uh, a full to- ride scholarship. That's funny. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's just the same as any it's, other collegiate but sport. But it's a it's ride. A you're, you're paid to ride horses. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yep. It's a big deal. It's a little different, obviously. You're not on a team, individual sport. But so, yeah. Um, and now I, uh, I've competed professionally uh, now that breakaway roping is getting so big in uh, professional rodeo, uh, I kind of focus on that a little bit. What is breakaway? Now too. What is breakaway? It's, so bre- yeah, breakaway is a is a women's event. Um, so all the rodeo events are derived from ranch work, right? And yeah. Um, so uh, breakaway roping is very fast. Uh, two two or three seconds usually is all it takes. But um, it's where a lady um, ropes a calf around the neck and then it just breaks away she stops her horse and it breaks away oh so yes I, yes i know what you're talking about so you're not t- you're not you're not using tie strings and stuff but you're, you're roping i've seen yeah. that that's just so yeah, cool yeah it's derived from the men's tie down roping event but but now but now cool. if we take you to springtime and branding time right which one of your yeah. favorite times of the year oh love it, it then just you don't you're, you don't hold back you're then you're doing it all um yep Yep. T- t- give me a 60 second overview. Father Bryce invited us to come out to do the brand, to do the roundup this this spring, and then I had s- stuff got in the way and we couldn't go. Give me 60 seconds of what that's like. Yeah. So, I I think branding. Um, it's we're really holding the hand of the tradition that's been passed on to us, like as cowboys. Um, I, I don't think there will ever be a machine that can replace a good man, a good hand. I, absolutely. A and a horse. And, yeah. Can't yeah, be replaced. So, um, you know, no four wheeler is ever going to replace this. Um, we brand calves because as, as we always have, um, to prevent theft, um, there's crazy as it sounds, there's still cattle rustlers, uh, today. It's mm-hmm. a little different form now, but, um, a lot of unbranded cattle can still be stolen and um so it's just as prevalent as ever that we just um, mark cattle and it's also just a health check too like we can treat any um uh wounds or illnesses that we find on the calves we give them their vaccinations and it, it all takes less than you know 20 seconds calves are on the ground and they're back with their mama in no time and it's just wonderful to behold it's my favorite time of year you get to see all your neighbors uh you they say every all day and spring they say everybody so, father yeah. bryce said everybody's 19 years old when it's roundup time <laughs> the young get older the <laughs> yeah. old get younger so okay so now i want to take this now to to this uh to where this ties in with our Catholic, uh, with our this this the anthropology of a human being, <laughs> you know, and their and their life with the Lord. Uh, I know that you have a real reputation of working with horses, oh, and yeah. and 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 I'm just thinking about how that um, that rider in the horse and what 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 lessons have you learned about your walk with the Lord and, and just in training horses. Yeah, absolutely. Well, patience is definitely one of them. (laughs) And I often compare working with horses to even working with people. Um, You have to know uh, when to apply pressure and when to um, take pressure away. Um, Every single individual is different, um, but that's the beauty of it. I mean, they're all creations of our Lord. Um, Every single human being and every single horse um, has their unique little um, quirks and strengths and things like that. But, um, you know, uh, Chesterton has a wonderful quote about, uh, the wonder of a horse. He said that, um, man has, man has gotten the airplane into, into the air, but it's not so wonderful as a fine man sitting atop a fine horse. <laughs> and, and I yes. agree. It's wonderful so creation. true. Don't so. you love that scripture verse in Proverbs about the horse? Yeah. But yes. God, God made a horse for man didn't he? I mean, there's something awesome about, you know, so in my TV show, Long Ride Home, you know, we're riding motorcycles and we do a lot of the similar things as when we ride in formation as the cavalry would do, the same hand signals and things like that. And we're riding as a pack. And I like, to, I always like to think of it as my iron horse. I'd like reach down and pat the gasoline tank just yeah. instinctively, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, and so, so the, 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 the ruggedness of the of the guy on the bike being outside in the weather in the elements you smell things you see things you endure things people in the cars don't endure but we had a beautiful sequence and i think our first season of long ride home our second season of long ride home where we we went out to a thoroughbred horse ranch and we had our motorcycles we were, we were i was i was 
tightening up my saddlebag on my motorcycle and then cinching the the saddle on the horse and we had this beautiful drone footage of these thoroughbreds running along you know just riding up like a foot off the ground the the drone watching them run just so just so majestic and beautiful and in some ways isn't isn't uh what you do with the horse also the way the holy spirit works with us i mean like the be, the horse being us as the lord uh, we in some ways our will needs to be learned to be we need to I don't know if it's breaking the will or or what but there's there needs to be lessons learned by the horse that are similar to what we need to learn in being responsive to God is that is that true yeah of course like uh, in my opinion um, a horse that a horse has a purpose and honestly a horse wants a purpose and I think that we're the same way and the Holy Spirit instructs as we instruct horses and I think that uh, you know that purpose fulfilled is like the absolute culmination of what the Lord wants from us and um, yeah I I mean definitely <laughs> I haven't thought about it in that way but I, I'm kind of fleshing it out here but um, it'll I mean, be in, in your study, next book yeah, exactly. No, yeah. Tell, tell me you what know, your thoughts are. Well, you know, the purpose, uh, you know, the, the whole thing about fulfilling your purpose, that's when the, the, the philosophical term, and I know you know this, for good, something being good is that it's like a good horse is a horse that's perf- uh, fulfilling mm-hmm. its purpose. Mm-hmm. A good woman is a woman who's, who really fulfills the way, who, who, first of all, fulfills what it means to be a woman, but then who it means to be this individual woman, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, we were watching Pirates of the Caribbean the other day, and there's this witchy woman of some sort talking to one of the bad guys, and she says, you've corrupted your purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, and it just, the, this whole thing about that there are true, I guess it's called teological or something like that in philosophy, the, the, perp, the why God made us. But if we don't learn to be responsive to him, if we don't learn uh, uh, how to, how, you know, we don't want to fight. You don't want to have to break a horse. You want a, a horse to learn to, to follow your instructions. It's a, breaking uh, your spirit is not what God wants, but he does want you to learn. Yeah, to be responsive to them. And, and and a lot of horses, you don't have to do anything but just use your legs to, yeah, right? Of so course. Give, give, me, give me another run at, 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 at lessons I could learn as, a, as a, we can learn as people, as how the Lord works with us. I hate to use the word break a horse. What do you, what do you call it? Yeah. Um, when you're working with a young, we, young we, horse. We kind of use the word started, like if you start a colt. Um, ah, and cool. Yeah, and train them. Um, yeah, we, we really don't use that term anymore. And... Yeah, to be honest with you, I've I've started one horse from the ground up, but what an incredible experience. I, like she was born on the place, I raised her, I did everything on her, and now, um, you know, using her on the ranch, um, using her in the arena. So, but yeah, I, you're so right. Like we, we do have to be willing, um, as a horse has to be willing to learn, to be open to that. Um, but there also is a hierarchy, right? I mean, mm-hmm. God gave us dominion over these animals mm-hmm. and he has dominion over us, but we mm-hmm. also have to submit our will for, for amazing things to happen. Like, I mean, I'm not a professional. I'm not the best there is. But you've is, done great but- work with, with horses that were problem <laughs> horses, right? You've also done work with oh, mature yeah. horses. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, you, so God, in essence, could teach an old dog, new, or new, an old horse new tricks, right? God can work with this. But, you know, just like when you're working that horse in that circular corral, yeah, you know, there's, there's, yeah, there's no way for that horse to get away. Mm-hmm. And part of that work in him is just to get them tired, a little bit tired, I, I think, to just kind of okay. say, are you done trying to do it your way now? OK, now we're going to try it my way, you know, yeah, and course. you kind of you know what I mean? There's 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 that way that the Lord works with us to sit, He kind of almost folds his arms and looks at us and go, um, are you done yet? Because I'd like to t- teach you something. And the thing yeah. is, if you let a horse like in a horse race, run as fast as it can, it'll kill itself. Some horses have such a spirit. So there's sometimes when you feel the Lord holding back on you. And then sometimes he says, just let it run. You know, there's, there, there is that responsiveness that we want to have to the Holy Spirit. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the Holy Spirit and this, the preservation of fire, <laughs> uh, which is what the, Lord, the Lord's really put on your heart. We're talking with Casey Monins, uh, who is now Casey, Co- what's your new Porter. name? AC Courtner. Courtner. <laughs> By the time this airs, she'll have been married. She's our cow, go- our cow girl uh, from Wyoming, and her husband's from Montana, two of the best places in the world. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, this is...
this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach with a deep adventure moment. You know, people ask me, what does it take to paddle out in big surf? You know, 20 foot plus surf is deadly surf. What does it take to paddle out in big waves? My son Jeremiah paddled, surfed 80 foot waves. What does it take to prepare to do that? And I give them my 20, 20, 20 rule. The first thing is you should be able to paddle your surfboard for 20 miles. If you can't do that, don't paddle out in heavy surf because big surf can get bigger and you can find yourself locked outside uh, for forever, for a long, long time. Second thing is you should be able to hold your breath for the time that it takes the sun to set. It's an ancient Hawaiian tradition to pray the moment the sun hits the ocean until it sinks beneath it. And that's about two minutes and 20 seconds. If you can't do that, don't paddle out in big surf. The other thing is we dive down, grab a rock 20 feet deep, and then run underwater. If you can't do that, don't paddle out in big surf. But the thing is, in life, you're already out in big surf. Whether you like it or not, you are. What are you going to do to prepare? The 20, 20, 20 rule. Spend 20 minutes in prayer three times a day, or maybe spend 40 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night. But if you're a man and you're not praying an hour every day, you're in trouble, the people you love are in trouble. You should be getting up early and slaying dragons. Your children should see you pray. If you're not praying 20, 20, 20 a day, then we what we say in Hawaii when we see a guy on the beach that's wearing surf clothing but he never goes out in big surf, we call them posers. If you're not spending an hour every day with the Lord, you're losing out. And the other thing, it's so much easier to pray for an hour a day than to pray for pray for five minutes because when you spend 30 minutes with the Lord you want to spend 40 when you spend 40 you want to spend an hour so follow the 20 20 20 rule in life spend an hour every day in prayer this is Bear Wozniak with the deepadventure.com you can gain traction in the virtues in my book deep adventure the way of heroic virtue and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine Oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We, we, we want to remind everybody that my book, uh, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and the book, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, both out by Sophia Publishing, are available to you Amazon or at Sophia Publishing or at our website, deepadventure.com. And we want to invite the men to go to our website, deepadventure.com. You'll find the Bear School of Manliness, which includes the Man Cave, where men kind of share what's going on in their life. And we have two Zoom, media, Zoom uh, meetups a month one with a small group, one with your bigger group. And then also there's three years worth of curriculum that you go through with us, but you can also lead your confirmation age and older sons through. And it's just a great way to open up a dialogue with your, with your sons about what it really means to be a man. We have video, we have written, we have audio, we even have self-assessment things. So I don't think there's anything else like it where we're giving men the tool to, to help their, their young boys become men. So go to deepadventure.com, you find all that out. We're talking with Casey Monins, who's going to be Casey Kortner. Mm-hmm. By the time this airs, she's marrying Tobias, who's a Red Lodge, Montana. Red Lodge, Montana, as I recall, is if you're in Glacier Park and you go due east, you drop out of the Rockies, and isn't it about, what, 100 miles from the Rockies, or where is it? Closer than that? <clears throat> well, it's actually right up against the Absaroka Beartooth Mountains. Oh, the so Beartooth. Be, okay. Yep, yeah, it'd be about an hour north of Cody, Wyoming, if that helps. Oh, I love Cody, Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. I love Buffalo Bill Cody, the real thing, man. Yep. No, I, I love Cody, Wyoming. So we're talking with Casey Monins, and we're going to talk about – can you repeat that GK Ch- – no, um, the, your friend's quote about ashes. Oh, what, yeah. What was so, his name? 
I actually, I, I don't even know much about this guy, but the quote is, it's uh, cir- circulated amongst Catholics a lot, but the quote is, uh, tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire by Gustav Mahler. He said that. And so that was kind of the inspiration for the, the name of my blog now, because I am at the center of these two wonderful traditions, the cowboy tradition and the Catholic tradition. And so I'm in the very unique position to kind of present both of those to the world and, and just how my Catholic faith can sanctify everything that I do, no matter, and, and everyone listening, uh, you've showed us that bear. I read your book, Deep Adventures, and how you tied the virtues to surfing, and, and it's just incredible. So, um, I mean, that's the beauty of being Catholic is we can do anything <laughs> yeah. and be Catholic. Because it, it's universal. It, it applies everywhere. Exactly. Uh, it, it's such a powerful thing. When you're, you're, you know, when you're out in the prairie, one of the biggest things you need to do is create fire. When you're when you're when you're a cowboy and you're out overnight, or you get somehow a storm hits and you're in the mountains, preservation of fire. Tell us tell us more about what what your message is there. Yeah. So, uh, talking about fire, um, if you go on my website, you'll see a, a branding fire. Um, mm. And where where I live, uh, people still, uh, you know, even though we have the option to use like a propane fire. Uh, people will still chop their own wood, dig a hole in the ground, and um, that's their branding fire where we heat up the branding irons to have that branding. And like I said, I just, it, is, it is seriously a direct straight line from, you know, the original cowboys. Like, we are doing what they did. And there's just so much resonance there for me because we as Catholics, we have the mass, and it is a direct line to the apostles, to Peter, and... Um, so there's just so much uh, of a parallel there for me but you know um fire you know just thinking about my own reconversion you know i was i was a cradle catholic but i think we all have to go through that reconversion and really find the faith again and, yeah tell, and tell, tell us fire. about that about your reconversion i want to hear about that yeah of course so um <clears throat> Like many college kids, I was kind of a mess, uh, a lot of <laughs> sexual immorality, uh, drinking, and you know, that's kind of the culture there, but also it was intellectual, okay? So uh, I, so often I think that uh, souls might go to die at the modern day university, and that's yes. what they were trying to do to me. Yes. If they get a whiff that you are a little bit religious, they're gonna press on that and try to you know, get that out of you, but I mean, by the grace of God, I had the wherewithal to go and research, ask questions, you know, why does the Catholic Church do this? Why do we believe this? And that was my conversion back to the faith. You know, I didn't Where did you find those answers? Where did you find those answers? Um, A lot online, like Catholic answers. There's nothing under the sun that they haven't answered. I just had Carlo Carlo Brossard on last week. Yeah, I love Catholic answers. I mean, the the church is 2,000 years old. There's nothing they haven't answered already. So Yes, um, that's exactly true. That's true. These heresies already been too. They're old fashioned. You know? <laughs> the New Age yeah. movement is, is goes back to the Gnostics. I mean, it goes back to the exactly. first century or before. <laughs> and so you love G.K. Chesterton though too, and I see you quoted Saint Tre- Therese of Lisieux in some of your writings. Yeah, Chesterton's huge for me. Uh, I went to the conference last summer, and I won't get to go to the conference this month because I'm getting married. But you know, good trade off. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Oh, what a wonderful guy. He was huge in my conversion because, um, again, like what we're talking about, he he talked about, you know, I mean, he loved his cigars. He loved okay, his let's big just, steaks. Loved- let's get to the truth of it. He likes beer. He likes beer. I was, yeah, I was getting there. Of course he does. And, <laughs> and, you, and you, I mean, just and you a do wonderful too. And you do yeah, too. I, yeah. yeah, there's nothing better than telling stories around a few beers. Like we said, cowboys are good at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's so witty, so humorous. The guy mm-hmm. has written more than I could ever read in my lifetime. Yeah. He loved his wife so much. Um, yes. and, and the logic and reason is what this world is starving for. Mm. And that's just what I love about him. So in the whole, in the whole area of or- orthodoxy, I mean, I was wondering if the book orthodoxy was one of the ones that you were first attracted to or. Yeah, oh. it was, um, you know, I think everybody's drawn in by like the little quips and quotes of Chesterton because mm-hmm. I mean he's quoted all the time. Um, I actually didn't dive straight into Chesterton because I'm not smart enough. <laughs> but yeah, Dale Alquist yeah, are yeah. very good. About I love Chesterton. Dale. Like, 
yeah, he's a good way to kind of dip your toe into it. But well, you, you I've know, read, yeah. Go ahead. I've read My Name is Lazarus like three different times. Really? Um, yeah, I don't know why that book is so amazing to me, but just all the converts that Chesterton has brought to Catholicism is incredible. Um, so he, I very much ask for his prayers over all of my writing. He's Isn't like it patron great when you're right, world, reading so. one of these greats? Like, a, you know, you could say, Thomas Aquinas, please help me while I'm trying to understand your, what you're writing. One of the things exactly. that he said, though, that I love, and this is what I think the, the, where you find the angst in college campuses and among others. Someone asked me once, you know, you seem to be so uh, alive in the Holy Spirit. Don't you find being a Catholic confining? And I was like, I, I just was bemused by that. And then I remember G.K. Chesterton's uh, s statement about orthodoxy, that orthodoxy, though, kind of like the walls of orthodoxy, let good things run wild. And and th as as a rancher, right? You you have fe nowadays. There's fences. Yep. It keeps yep. them out of trouble. Tell me about that. G draw yeah, that of comparison. Um. Yeah, let's good things run wild. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a maxim among ranchers, and that's uh, good fences keep good neighbors. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and, right. Uh, but yeah, of course. I mean, we could draw so many lines from this, like. We need boundaries, um, and actually, humans crave boundaries. You know, I've been like um, really pondering um, <clears throat> secular society. We just want to know who we are. You know, we we see people scrabbling around trying to find their identities, and while they're you know creating new identities and new pronouns and everything like this, the easiest way to find your identity is through tradition. Just take a glance behind you, see where you've come from. And so that's huge for me. And I'm lucky to have received that and uh, kind of researched my way into it. But well, I mean, we also try, received it on the ranching end. We try to reject our nature. And I think it's like playing whack-a-ball because nature's going to win. I mean, you know, you're out, in the, you're out in, the, in the wilds yourself, you know, in Wyoming and your husband in Montana. <laughs> you soon to be husband. Yeah. You cannot suppress nature. You can think that you can. But you can't. Uh, where a man, when a, two men get together and get married, it, it's going to be, there's going to be real difficulties there. And it's like whack-a-ball, where you, they, they, they say, well, we're going to abort this child and make this woman free, and they whack that head as it comes up, and then you see her, 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 the pain that she's, she's living with. Eventually, the more you try to suppress nature, uh, nature <laughs> eventually will win. And I think it's, um, it's you look back when you say looking back at tradition, tradition. Uh, uh, of course, they're not saying that everything was all great, but but so much of the richest of traditions, especially within the church, are there for a reason. And if you really look at it, it's consistent with the way God made us. You know, we know what we have. We have a nature, mm -hmm. and to be responsive to that is how we get how we find happiness. Someone was asking me this morning on the phone. Oh, I just have all these problems, and 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 what this is what what should I do about it? And I, and I really couldn't answer this person's problem, give them an answer because their whole foundation, what they were living with someone outside of marriage, um, there's no answer for that other than to go back where the detour started, that rocky road you were on, and get things right with yourself with Christ. And so they're trying to build on on sand, and I think it finally catches up with people, and they see that we need we need to go back and understand. Like you said, what was the quote again? Say it again. I love that about the ashes. I, I'd never heard it before. Okay. Yeah. Tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire. And that's that's uh, <clears throat> Casey Monins. I don't know if that's how you pronounce your name, but now it's Casey it's Cortner. Monins, <laughs> yep, <It's> Casey <laughs> Cortner. Preservationoffire.com is where you can find out more. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus. You have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, 
plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I am your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have with us Casey Kortner. Uh, just got married. Well, she's going to get married uh, before this airs. And I love it because I love this. She, you're drinking water out of a, is it yeah, a It's pick a ball a, jar. It's a ball <laughs> jar. So it's a pickling jar, right? Yeah. That's yeah. just so cool. You, if you could just see her. I think I see, I don't think it's Alcorn's behind you. Yeah, it, it sure is. It is. It's yep, Alcorn's. That's my fiance's. Oh, actually, bear. There's a bear rug on the wall right there. There is. It's a little bear. <laughs> there is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a brown bear. It's a brown it bear. Is. Well, they're not little, but they're yeah. And so, yeah. so it's yeah. so that's not actually like someone look, talk, commented about my background, you know, on YouTube. Oh, that's a nice background. Where did you get it? Well, those are actually real books back there. In yeah. your case, that's not a, exactly. a, a ranch. You know what I do? I'm going to tell you my new book. Uh, that I'm working on, uh, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? The ru Rules for Manliness. You know what I do? This sounds so sad. It sounds so tragic. But I get my big screen TV turned on, and I click it to a Montana ranch or a Wyoming ranch because <laughs> they'll have these where they just have the camera on and they just record it for hours or or an or a, or a, or a, or a inside of a ranch house. And that's my pretend, yeah. that's my pretend <laughs> ranch that's house. And you have the real one. So when you travel as a cowgirl, um, there's, you know, you, there, you, I, one of the blogs that you wrote talks about how to establish a rhythm, kind of like a Catholic rhythm to your life. Can you talk about yeah. that with us? Yeah. So uh, I'm not perfect in this regard by any means, but I do definitely try to keep my morning routine. Um, but so... I travel for a living, <clears throat> and um, first thing I do when I get in the car is pray my rosary. You do? And uh, absolutely, yep. So, actually, the you know in the car is where I have received you know just so many consolations in prayer. Um, I spend hours on the road, and so it's just a wonderful time to to talk with God. And um, but yeah, the rosary is something I've struggled with in the past for sure. But now I'm up to praying one or two rosaries a day, which is a big accomplishment for me. But a lot of good things have come from the rosary. Isn't it? You know, Thank like, the Lord. tell me about that. Like, what kind of things? Um, let's see. Do you I mean, just like, this this opportunity um, to be on this show. And um, I've been um, interviewed in the past on podcast which is like crazy to me i i don't think i'm anything special so, but i i'm just authentically living this life and being catholic about it so that's amazing but also you know the blog like i said it's been so well received even when i've talked about seemingly controversial things i wrote a blog post about uh, my choice not to live with my fiance and that's a hot topic i mean yes, secular is. society it's it's totally okay um, yeah. So we made that decision. Even and, in a lot you know, of Christian even, societies, it's okay. Yeah, you go in, yeah, yeah You and a lot of go in a lot of churches, and the couples are living together. And it's just, you know, it's it's just the breakdown. Yeah. Of the family. Absolutely. So it's, even you know even people that were cohabiting cohabitating were um, they they responded so well to it and um, you know I. Uh, we kind of had a tragedy in our neighborhood not too long ago. Our, our neighbor committed suicide, and so um, even though a lot of my friends are not Catholic. I I responded by writing a blog post with a lot of Padre Pio's wisdom in there and the church's wisdom on how to go through something like that. And and that is exactly what people needed in tragedy. And so I was just very mm. thankful that I could talk to them as well. So, Yeah, you're well read. I was just sp spending some time with someone yesterday who yeah, just loves Padre Pio, but he's a tough guy. He'll tell you like what it's like. Says it like it is, right? And I think that's the thing. Ab the thing about the cowboy code is, I th I know that cowboys say that they're ma they're a man of their word or you're a woman of your word, but the other thing is that mm -hmm. cowboys tell the truth. They're straight shooters. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're going to ask them a question, you're going to hear the truth. So be careful what you ask. You know, and so you're you're speaking truth, direct truth to them like that, not in a judgmental way, <clears throat> is is critical. Of course, yeah. Uh, well, it, the desire for the truth is in all of us, and mm. and I'm learning this, you know, through this blog. I, people just want to hear the truth. Our society is so confused, and and that's the devil's work. You know, he is the king of confusion, and yes. um, 
you know, and I was there too. Like I said, I was, I was there in college, uh, this deconstructionism, relativism, mm. all this stuff, you know, it's just confusing, but there is light. Can you imagine needing a safe food. place, a, 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 a safe place for a cow girl? <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to my happy place, my safe place. You know, what would that, what would that, well, for, for us, it's, it is the rosary. It is, it is mass. Uh, you make a point yeah. as you travel to go to mass. Do, do you go to mass daily, or you, or you make an effort to do that when you? Because I know you're an hour and a half can, away yeah. from where you are now, from the nearest yeah. grocery store. But for sure, yeah. When I'm when I'm at the ranch in Wyoming, I am a long ways from mass. But Father Bryce, he'll do uh, like a monthly daily mass. He'll come out. Um, it's a long ways for him too, though. Yeah. But yeah, as I travel, you know, if if there's something weighing on my heart, I will just go to Adoration, find a church that's open. Um, try to find a mass, um, Latin masses. That's a wonderful thing that I can find on the road, and I mm -hmm. love them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think there's a lot to be said about just entering a dark church and seeing Jesus in the tabernacle and just mm. visiting with him. So. Okay, well now I want to ask you this question. You're a cowgirl. What do you have to say to the women out there about finding the right man? I mean, I think so many women... Uh, They've given up the social contract of we're not going to have sex. <laughs> outside, we're not going to have sex outside of marriage. They've given up on that, right? With the pill, yeah. just destroyed that. And then men don't get get to be men. A man becomes a man when he takes on responsibility. Otherwise, yeah, he's course. just a boy. And when there's no, and John Paul II's first writings were love and responsibility. They go hand in hand. So when you can just have sex with a girl, and there's no responsibility, no no kuleana, as we say here. There's no devotion, commitment, to marriage. What do you say to our women out there right now about about finding the right man and wait yeah. waiting yeah, I think men and women both are struggling to find their partners for life but I guess the first thing I would say is you need to act like a wife or a husband um, and be that honorable person first and I, I've been there you know I've been in some not good relationships before and kind of um, brought myself lower and it doesn't mm. work like that you know mm. you have to as, Fult, as Fulton Sheen said especially as women we we heighten the virtue of society because yes. our men have to rise up to our level of virtue yes and um, and it's true in all cases but you know in prayer of course it's going to be in God's timing um, but there's this beautiful prayer that meant so much to me as I was dating Tobias and it was a prayer to Saint Raphael um, for my future spouse and I had just met Tobias and as I was going through the prayer it got to the point uh, uh, where it mentioned Tobias and Sarah from the Bible and it just oh it just knocked me on my knees like uh, I knew I, Tobias always knew that he was going to marry me, but I didn't know yeah. <laughs> at that but time. There, but there is that. Um, there, go ahead. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, you're fine. So, um, yeah, I mean, just return to our Lord. There, there are still a lot of good people out there. I choose to be hopeful in the human race. I see a lot of very, very good people. Lowering doing your their standards, best. you talked about. You lower your standards is you're just in, you're just asking for a miserable life. Exactly. Hold, hold yeah. your yep. women. Women have to hold their men to to higher expectations. And you know what? The boys won't. And and that's how, you know, how you get rid of a boy. Yeah. And 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 you will only have a man be attracted to you then. Absolutely. Yep. No, I lost relationships because you know I I did draw a line, especially about sexual immorality. I mean that's. That's the, the buzzword now, especially as Catholics. And it's so difficult, you know. But I've mm -hmm. definitely lost relationships because of that. But Thank God um, you lost them. God. Yeah, right? exactly. At, yep, I never met Tobias till, till later until I was ready. And we both say God's timing was just perfect for us. So. Well, we love our strong women, you know. And it's not the, it's not the, it's not the cowboys that tame the West. I'm going to tell you the truth. It's the women. When the women began to come out and they <laughs> said no, and the, the, you know, and they held the men to higher virtue, and they and 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 bring it, what you're really doing is you're bringing out the best in in a man. But as long as men, uh, as I think it was Thomas Aquinas said that the definition of an effeminate man is the one who seeks pleasure. And if that's all you are as a right. as as a man is 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 a, a pleasure seeker, fun times and pleasure, you're not a man at all. You're just a boy. You know, there's nothing like getting up at four in the morning on a snowy morning, right? When you know you've got cows that need ha need hay, and there's there's a cow that a certain cow that needs to be doctored up a little bit. It teaches you responsibility. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, 
uh, yeah, <laughs> boredom, boredom definitely uh, breeds a lot of our um, our sins and things. You're like that. You're right. So, there's no yeah. boredom. There's no boredom <laughs> when you're on so a ranch. Sure. There's well, always yep. something to be done. We've been talking there with is. Casey Cortner who by the time this airs is, is, is getting married to Tobias Kortner. She has a wonderful ministry, and uh, I think it's just beginning to blossom. And it'll be nice to see how you and Tobias, what the Lord does with the two of you together. Uh, what, where can they find you again, Courtney? I mean, <laughs> excuse me, Casey <laughs> Kortner, where can they find you? Uh, Thepreservationoffire.com. And I want you to, I, I want you in the next year or so just to be meditating on this book. That God has, mm -hmm. that God's given you. You've got so much to offer. Okay. Um, little okay. cowboy poetry. Is Tobias going to write some cowboy poetry for you? Um, you know, I've dabbled in that in the past. It's kind of a fun medium, but Tobias, he uh, he's actually very good about journaling and really? just keeping That's days cool. and stuff. That's which cool. I find very admirable. Yeah. Um, not much of a poet, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, well, he does write. He does journal. So we've been talking with Casey Cortner at preservationoffire.com. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we always yeah. say here aloha at the end of our broadcast because ha means breath and aloha means to give breath, to share breath, which is what God did in Genesis when he breathed his Holy Spirit into us. And what Jesus said when he said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, and he breathed his Holy Spirit. So until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Will you say it with me, Casey? Aloha. Aloha. There you go. It's kind of like yeehaw. <laughs> hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books. And since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too. Plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.